in our lecture, I like to ask every one of you to think what is your own decision or definition about the beginning of the individual human life. And could new technology, 3D and 4D sonography, solve at least a little bit of this most fundamental topic? Ladies and gentlemen, you and me are working in a very delicate field where we have many ethical dilemmas, problem of abortion, forced cesareans, prosecution of women for drug use during pregnancy, fetal protection policies, and so on. So those are all ethical problems to be solved maybe with the new generation. Not everything should be solved by us. However, one of the most controversial topics in modern bioethics, science, and humanity is when does human life begin? And is the unborn baby fetus person? When does it start to be? There are several possible answers. First one is that human life starts at the moment of conception, as most of the big religions will teach us. At the moment of implantation, when we have the first maternal contribution in form of formation of individual face, or when heart activity begins, we can now detect it as early as sex week gestation. Or does human life begin when the brain activity starts? Or does it start in response to stimuli? All of these possible answers should stimulate you trying to decide what is your own definition. Or when fetal movements are felt, you know that much before mother can notice it, we can notice it before the sonography. Or does the human life begin at the time of birth? You will see surprisingly that most of European countries where I work do are based on Roman law, which said fetus has no right. It has right retrospectively, when born and if born. Let's then see what is the consequence. Another philosophical, more than scientific question is, when it becomes a person, dilemma is between several answers. When a person is in society, does science know the answer? Or is the answer a matter of religion or philosophy? So, ladies and gentlemen, at this stage, this very complex question has no proper answer. And uh, biology, medicine, philosophy, anthropology, theology, sociology, ethics, and law are very important human activities, and they do have their own definition to reach consensus among so different opinions. It's not good. We should stimulate meetings like this one to start thinking about this and to see how we can define most important for us is scientific definition. Why? Because right for right is about any other rights. So if you say the life starts at the two-stage embryo, two cells embryo, you should protect it. So then technician working in IVF process would be killed, you know, throwing away several of embryos, very early embryos. Look at the process of ovulation. Mature follicle, rupture of mature ovarian follicle, follicular fluid is going out. You will see egg inside the fluid in a second, and egg is traveling through fallopian tube. Here it is. And of course, if you have any mechanical problem, obstruction, or not, not patent fallopian tube, patient will be temporarily infertile. From another part, 100 million of sperms in air and blood are reaching egg. And they are part of life human beings. The tail after sperm maturation in cervical mucus, they can fertilize egg. So some people said that this is the beginning of life. And then the egg is traveling through fallopian tube to meet with the sperms in ampular parts of two. One out of millions will manage to enter in cytoplasm and to start fertilization process. So, 
both egg and sperm are part of the line material. This is egg and the protein membrane will be part by one of them and we have two cells embryo. Everything is decided at this stage. You see chromosomal division from haploid number of chromosomes divided in diploid number. Each of them has genetic inheritance for parents and at this stage everything is decided. Is this beginning of human life or is it different? Within the same volume we will have within 36 hours four stage embryo being followed by morula formation and at the stage of morula we can extract microsurgically two cells to make genetic reimplantation diagnosis and then implantation in endometrium at the level of blastocyst. And this is new technique produced by Nono School Director in Japan, Professor Maeda, called kinematography. For the set, first time you can see a real process of the blastocyst formation. You see polar bodies, you see sperm entering the cytoplasm, and you see two polar bodies, you see fertilization, bones here. And now everything within several hours and everything in fallopian tubes. Quick division. Three 
The first question is whether human biological life begins, and this is a scientific question. So scientists should try to answer it. The problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that single week process of fertilization plus 78 hours. So which moment in this 78 hours we scientists will advise to our legal colleagues in the beginning of human life because from that moment it should be protected. Cluster concept of life said that life is autonomous, auto-reproductive, auto-regulative and has genetic unity. <coughs> this is in all textbook of biology. However, there are many controversies about that. There are living humans to whom at least one of the criteria in the cluster concept of life do not apply. For example, postmenopausal women or a man with aspermia is undoubtedly alive, but both are incapable of auto reproduction. Patient who is on dialysis machine is clearly alive, but in terms of renal function of the regulation, not physiologically autonomous. Patient with insulin dependent diabetes is not physiologically self regulating in terms of glucose homeostasis, but is clearly alive. Another example comatose patient lacks everything, but it is clearly alive. So these examples illustrate the distinctive feature of cluster concept. So coming back to the possible answer of the first question. There are two answers, not one. First answer is distinct human life begins when there is a distinct entity, and this is pre-embryo stage, first 14 days after fertilization by American College of Fertility. Even so early, diagnostic possibilities and even therapeutic possibilities do exist. As I told you, here at this stage, we can extract two cells, make genetic diagnosis of health or disease, and transfer healthy embryos. So the first question has to answer. Second one is, individual human life begins later with the emergence of the embryo. Pre-embryo and embryo. This is American society. This is combined picture of embryonic individuum. Eight weeks and six days. 3D and 3D power doctor helped us to assess all of these, of these anatomical events. If you remember in Hollywood Quran, it is said that fetus at this stage has a shape of letter C. 3D sonography clearly proven. So we can easily distinguish head from the body, yolk sac, and the entire vascularity. So the second question in our proposal is when do obligation to protect human life begin? This is question of general theological and philosophical ethics. So when shall we protect human life? Second question has no authoritative answer because of many controversies and expecting definitive answer to the second question is an exercise in utility for physicians and professional medical ethicists. And finally, the third question is, how should physicians respond to disagreement about when obligation to protect the malaria beginning? This is question for professional medical ethics. Ladies and gentlemen, this is picture of different behavior of physicists. We nowadays easily, with some experience and good technology, can assess personality and different behavior of physicists. Then we come to the problem of person. If you look in the dictionary, the English term person has derived from the Latin term persona, which means the mask used by an actor in a performance. I look for several other definitions. One the dictionary said, person is one that is what constitutes an individual as a distinct person, but never said what is what. Another dictionary said, it is the state of existing as a thinking, intelligent being. However, famous philosopher Bertrand Russell said, most people would rather die than think, and many in fact do. So, is this good definition? I don't know. Personality is the individual as a whole with 
everything about him, which makes him different from other people, can solve the psychiatric. Because we can distinguish fetuses from each other by behavior and by their 3D and better 4D pictures, can we really have a proof that they are behaving different to fulfill criteria for personality? I'll show some of these pictures to you. Even twins do have individual behavior. To be identical biologically doesn't mean to be identical by behavior. Even very early in pregnancy, in diet or early diagnostic things, we have two different activities, spontaneous and generous, the pressing about fetal brain function and stimulating. And monochorionic things do have specific behavior. What are scientific conditions for being person? Minimum intelligence, self-evidence, self-control, sense of time, and so on concerns for others, there are many. Society holds together by the rules that people are bound to obey. Human behavior varies surprisingly from country to country, from era to era. But however desire it may appear to the outsider, it must always follow constraints to biological reality. The problem of science is that it does change biological reality. Coming back to a very important question to all of us, when human life should be legally protected? At the time of conception, at the time of implantation, at the time of birth. So raise your hand who believes that we should protect human life from the conception. Thank you very much. Time of implantation with maternal contribution. Thank you. And at the time of birth, so, even you, very homogeneous, living in the same country, the same religion, have different opinions. So this is a very hot topic. In all European countries, except Ireland and Liechtenstein, juridical considerations are based on Roman law. And Roman law said, the fetus has rights when it is born or if it is born. So, if this is true, if we do accept this, if we do not stimulate our legal colleagues and friends to change law to protect babies, why then perinatal medicine exists? There are three possible approaches to define fetal right, right of unborn. First, I said, fetus has no independent rights and is merely an integrated part of the mother. It's the right of mother to do with fetus whatever she does with kidney, with liver, with any other organ. Second opinion said fetus has four rights, identical to a born, fully formed and independent human being. And the third, fetus has some rights, but less than a person has after birth. Again, I will not ask you what you accept from who, who earlier. Pro, we have to increase, improve our uh, vocabulary. Legal capacity is a right and obligation provided by civil law. Human being becomes natural person at the moment of birth by most of legal systems. Ladies and gentlemen, this is World Congress of Perinatal Medicine. I organized in my city, Zagreb. There were 123 countries represented there. And perinatal medicine, fascinating new field, taking care about expect another day the unborn and newborn children. So why in the last 50 years we have so dramatic improvement in pregnancy medicine if our patient fetus is not legally protected at all? So many controversies. If human life is worth being protected by law only after delivery, for what reason does perinatology exist and develop? And perinatology fight for. From legal perspective, and this is very paradoxical, it is better for a child to be born prematurely than at the right time, since from the moment of birth, child's life is protected by law. So, newborn at 28 weeks has all protection. Fetus at 28 weeks has no rights at all. However, when 
medical point of view, this must seem an absolute, as the best environment for a child to develop his his or her mother's bone during all the period of the ninth month of pregnancy. So, analyzing jurisdiction of courts and regarding practice of medical research, one French lawyer said, unborn offspring of some animal is better protected than the human fetus. You cannot kill sheep with seven, you know, months. Uh, what are the answers to big religions? Five great religions and their answers. If you go in Christianity and almost all religions who appreciate it, the obligation to say right is one of the cardinal principles of the religious approach. Because he who destroy life is a, he destroy the whole world. And he who sells life is a, a, he saves the world. So I had the, the pleasure to be invited three times by the Holy Father when we did start in 1984 of one huge satellite field at the Man of Queens. He did evacuate it, he, he successfully delivered to the Queens. And he wanted to see from scientists how human life can be saved, how we can help Uncle Baby not to kill him. So Christianity view says that human being is person from the conception and it does not depend on age, physically or physical ability. It depends on soul that is in every human. Another Orthodox Christian rule said the beginning of human life and human being from the stage of conception. Human is human from the very beginning of his conception. It would never be made human if it were not human already. So our co-chairman, Professor Chervanek, the man who published 36 book on ethics and obsessions, also discussed ethical aspects of embryo and we published together the book Embryo as a Patient, studying what are the rights of embryo. Then we have been invited in the fifth to the patient society, one of the most successful international society we can bring sometimes here. And uh, Hope gave us lecture 20 minutes ago, dignity of Jesus, in which he said that in no way Church of God to progress. Rather, it rejoices at every victory over sickness and disability. Its concern is that nothing should be done which is against life. <coughs> then I met Islamic people involved in this. And uh, I met Imam Shafai, our other university, together with the Ministry of Health of Egypt, with Professor Mahimara. And we discussed for two hours how Holy Book Quran uh, Reads beginning of human life. At the seventh century, the illiterate man, Prophet Muhammad uh, wrote in Holy Book Quran the beautiful description of three membranes in the human development, discussing the Lakhra and all other stages. So he couldn't know that. He very probably had a message from the God. So, I then published a paper and review with Professor Kuvenshan University having about human life cycle, cycle. And we then found that it is still, there are two schools of thought in Islam. It is totally not clear when human life begins. However, it was recently accepted life begins at the second month after the conception. Very interesting opinion. Jewish view fetus consider as a potential human being, not the natural. Within the first 40 days of conception, fetus does not exist yet and has no human rights. Buddhist view said that there is continuity from life to life through many reincarnations. However, <coughs> Professor Maeda, who is acting in the Buddhist religion, said that Buddhist as a church accepted that the beginning of life is not fertilized all, but formation of blastocysts. At the level of blastocysts, all cells are programmed. They are truly potent before blastocysts. At the level of blastocysts of pre embryo as we discussed there. So one religion moves to another definition. Hinduism does not view the soul, Atman, as a specific being or a specific end. In spite of that, attitude Hinduism recognizes no life at the time 
of conception. So ladies and gentlemen, life has a sacred and religious value, but in no way is that value of concern only for believers. The value at stake is one which every human being can touch by the light of reason. Thus it is necessarily concerns everyone. Slippery slope, the term which I like to remember, is a philosophical concept stating that if you take the first step in certain direction, you may have no way to stop, and thus will proceed and slip into actions that are either immoral or illegal or both. So you have to be very careful in defining such a complex question as the human life. How do we stay in the right place when the wave is always dynamic, both from biological point of view and the technological point of view? I think we have to keep in mind that the ethics are also dynamic process. Something what seems to be ethical today might not be in 10 years. So ethical answers that we have today may be totally inappropriate decade from now. So we have to put a framework in place that will constantly reevaluate our ethical position on these issues so that we do not end up in a slippery slope situation. So what is the role of scientists? Scientists should not be called upon to set the boundaries, but rather philosophers or religious advocates for legal answers. I have to, ex to confess today, I'm sure my friends, uh, Apostolic expert, uh, Jan Moni Woody, and all other Pakistanian colleagues and friends, will agree science cannot answer the question and the reason. This is religious more than scientific problem. Teaching of Catholic Church that fertilized egg is human person also led to prohibit illegal fertilization for the purpose of reproduction. And still is. If you read last Pope's uh, speech, it's very conservative, saying there's no human reproduction. Pluralism of opinions exists on the moral status of the embryo. It is shown by the fact that many countries in the Christian sphere of influence authorize IVF because of its therapeutic value in the treatment of infertility. We should learn from IVF and see that new technologies should not be needed to run because we are afraid of them. It should be the vocation of bioethics, ladies and gentlemen, to find a way to make the best use of new medical technologies, as was the case in IVF. On the one hand, Every new discovery may lead to unwanted and even dangerous consequences. There is no good without bad. Using this argument, however, one should stop using cars because they are the number one killers in modern society. <coughs> Going back to horse and life. In the process of accepting or rejecting proposed significant scientific discovery, multidisciplinary committees should try to force in potential advantages as well as damages and disadvantages as fast as possible and control, restrict and regulate discoveries for the benefit of mankind. In this sense, genetic innovation, gene therapy, stem cell research, cloning are not different from others minor advancements in science throughout human history. Knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, knowledge itself ought not to be limited. And therefore, the function of bioethics is not to run up from research into new technologies, but to define the limits within which, if at all, these new scientific means may be applied and for what purpose. We should formulate the bioethics committee acceptable policies. Science alone, again, does not answer the question of what to do with knowledge generally. It is not in itself moral level, and our life is too easy to be explained by science alone. We have to listen and accept some of the religious In this light of all these controversies, ethics of discussion is a consensus that cannot be achieved by force, no matter how much the tactic or the political groups are involved. By so finally, can we then, as a scientist, give to our legislators, based on our knowledge of fertilization, 
a clear cut definition beginning to summarize. Can we? We cannot. And Luigi Mastrani, American anthropologist, is very right. He said, on the matter of scientific definition, Mastrani begins, we are asking impossible. We are dealing with metaphysical, religious issues and not a scientific way. Science has to wait until new proofs are done to define the process of our colleagues from legal part. So finally, for me, this American Revolutionary Society statement is quite acceptable. Human life is continuous process, and therefore, the exact moment at which new person is born cannot be defined in purely scientific terms. Definition of person necessarily involves metaphysical, religious, and philosophical judgment. I think it is really important in conference like this, in St. Giuliani for putting this topic, to acknowledge multiple perspectives, not one single answer. This will allow us to see that there are many different ways of looking at the same problem. Thank you very much.